Today on America's Test Kitchen, Julie and Bridget make the easiest pancakes from scratch. Lisa reviews syrup dispensers. Jack challenges Bridget to a tasting of turkey bacon. Dan explores the science of browning. And Becky cooks Julie a creamy French-style scrambled eggs. It's all coming up right here on America's Test Kitchen. little bit of a test kitchen confidential here. I am a lazy cook, especially in the mornings. I can't bring myself to make pancakes. I prefer French toast. You dip it, you flip it, and you eat it. But pancakes, <laughs> you gotta find a scratch recipe that's really tasty, but also easy before the cup of coffee, mm -hmm. right? And we've had a lot of really fussy pancake recipes over the years. Whipping egg whites, they're delicious, but I'm not dragging a mixer out before coffee. No. Yeah. So as you know, most Saturdays, I make pancakes with my daughter, Marta. You never and, invite me over. Uh, yep, because I haven't <laughs> had coffee yet. <laughs> and you know, for years I used the same box mix that I like. It was low in preservatives, sure. but um, it didn't taste that great, but it kind of didn't matter. <laughs> then this recipe came along, changed everything. Now we make this because it is incredibly easy and it tastes so much better. Converted you from a box to scratch. It did. And hopefully from me, from French toast pancakes, <laughs> right? I don't know, that's a little bit of a hurdle. <laughs> we'll try, we'll try. So we have two bowls, a dry bowl, in a wet bowl. Okay. okay. We're gonna start with a dry bowl. Here, I have two cups of flour. To this, I'm gonna add three tablespoons of sugar. And that's just all-purpose flour, that's right? Just not AP flour, not a specialty flour. Mm -mm. Okay, good. So next, we're gonna add one of the leaveners. This is baking powder. We're gonna add four teaspoons. That's quite a bit. That's a lot. It's most double than what you find in other recipes, but we wanted really tall, fluffy pancakes, and huh. that's one of the ways you get that. To this, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of salt. Last, but definitely not least, some baking soda. So we already have the leavener in there from the baking powder. This is half a teaspoon of baking soda. Adds a little bit of tang, which is really important for a pancake. Also helps with browning. Mm. Just half teaspoon is all you need. Now, a lot of times when I make this recipe, I make it two batches and I put one in a Ziploc lock bag and then I write the rest of the ingredients on it. So next weekend, psh, even easier. Creating your own box mix. Mm -hmm, exactly. All right, on to the wet ingredients. We have two eggs. To this, we're gonna add a quarter cup of vegetable oil. And I like adding this before I add the milk. That just helps break up the yolks without it getting too splattery. Now we're gonna add some milk. This is one and a half cups of milk. So last but not least, a little bit of vanilla. This is half a teaspoon of vanilla. Again, pretty crucial to making a good tasting pancake. All right, now the really hard part. We're gonna put one into two. Gorgeous, no folding, no whipping. The hardest part about this recipe is not over whisking this, because again, we want tall pancakes. And one thing we found is that when you make this too smooth, you actually get a batter that's more runny, mm -hmm. and you want a thick batter. And that looks like a mistake. It does, especially before coffee. <laughs> but actually, this is good, because the lumps make a thicker batter. Of course, you can make a thicker batter with less liquid, but that makes them dry. Hmm. So those lumps of flour, they need to hydrate, so they're sitting in hydrating but keeping the batter nice and thick which makes taller pancakes all right and how long we have to let this rest for 10 minutes all right it's been 10 minutes we're coffeeed up and ready to start <laughs> cooking now i want to show you the texture of this batter see how clumpy and thick it is that's good because that means nice tall fluffy pancakes all right if you could put that in the sink for me please i can do that all right, now we're ready to start cooking, and I'm gonna use a griddle because it's perfect for pancakes. You can do six pancakes at once. You could use a nonstick pan, but you'd have to do about three at a time. Yeah, well, we've got a whole bus full of truckers coming <laughs> over, and they're expecting some serious pancakes. And they're pancakes. hungry. They're hungry. So I'm gonna pour a half a teaspoon of vegetable oil all over this griddle, and then I'm gonna take a piece of paper towel and smooth it out so it's a nice, even film of oil across the whole surface. Because you know how sometimes you get spotty pancakes? That's because you have puddles of oil. Wherever there's a puddle of oil, it's preventing the heat from transferring from the pan up, and that's a light spot. Interesting. I know, right? And I have this griddle set to 350 degrees, but we're gonna test it with a test pancake. So, a tablespoon of the batter right into the center of the griddle, and we're gonna cook it for one minute to see how hot the griddle is. All right, so it's been about a minute. Let's take a look at our test pancake. It's a beautiful golden. Now, that's only been a minute. The big pancakes will take a bit longer. All right, I'm gonna set this guy aside, and now I'm gonna make six pancakes. This is a spring-loaded portion scoop, and it makes it really easy to make pancakes of the same size. If you didn't have this, you'd just use a quarter cup measure. And you just wanna make sure to smooth it out to a nice four-inch round. Now that batter really is nice and thick. You can mm -hmm. see, because it's not spreading too much. That's if it, it was, you'd end up with a crepe. That's it. Thick batters make tall pancakes. Now these are gonna cook for about two to three minutes on this first side. Then we're gonna flip them over and cook them for about a minute or two on the second side. 
Usually by the time I get the last one down, we're pretty close to the first one being ready to flip. Okay. All right, so it's been about two minutes on this first side. Let's take a peek. You can see because they're a little bit set Ooh. around the edge. Oh, that's a pretty color. All right, that's what we're looking for, a nice golden brown. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now the key to flipping, you gotta keep the spatula low to the griddle. And then if it hits another pancake, don't worry. Let it set and then push it away. These look good. Mm -hmm. Now the second side doesn't take as long as the first side, only one to two minutes on this side. All right. Now my house, we eat them right off the griddle. They barely hit a plate. But if you wanted to have a polite breakfast where everyone sits down together, the easy thing to do is keep these pancakes warm in an oven, 200 degree oven, put them on a wire rack, and then everyone can eat together. Hmm. All right, so these will go in the warm oven and then I'll come back and I'll cook the remaining pancakes. Sounds good. All right, so. A proper breakfast where we eat at the same time. Oh, this recipe, good. in theory, serves four to six people. <laughs> <laughs> so, four pancakes for you? <laughs> I'm gonna give you a nice stack of three. Is that cool. what you call a short stack or a tall stack? <laughs> That's a short stack. <laughs> I have a surprise for you. Not only do I have syrup, a little bit of a compound butter. Now this is like a Saturday, Sunday sort of breakfast. So a compound butter is just a stick of softened butter with some flavorings. And here I have almond and orange. Oh. And it's delicious on pancakes. You're just gonna, you're gonna have to trust me on this. I'm just gonna put a little. This orange almond butter, you can find that recipe on our website at americastestkitchen.com. A little bit of syrup. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. Gorgeous. Mm, all right. Oh, I love the first bite right down between the three pancakes. No time like the present, my darling. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm. Very tender. So fluffy. Which is so surprising. And fluffy, you're right, which is so surprising because you did not whisk egg whites until they were fluffy oh, and then have to goodness. fold them in, right? And that little bit of butter on there is pretty nice. It just adds a little bit of flavor with mm -hmm. the maple syrup. And I have to confess, I'm looking for a lump. Mm -mm. You know, I keep expecting, oh, I'm going to bite into this pocket of dry flour. Mm -mm. None. <laughs> oh, I'm considering changing my mind about pancakes. Mm. Yeah, just based on this. And they're so much better tasting than any box mix mm. out there. None of those off flavors, no preservatives, which I personally like. Mm. Julia, you and your pancakes have rocked my world. Awesome. <laughs> Glad to hear it. I mean, who knew being a lazy cook can pay off? Welcome to Team Pancake. There you go. And if you want to be on Team Pancake, well, just have to whisk flour, sugar, and leaveners, then eggs and oil with milk, and keep that batter lumpy. Now let it rest while you have a cup of coffee or two. Then cook the pancakes on a lightly oiled griddle until brown on both sides. Serve with some maple syrup or even an easy orange almond butter. So from our test kitchen to your kitchen, the perfect pancakes you can eat any time, easy pancakes. And they're even better with butter and syrup. Mm. You look like I mean you need it. a little more syrup. <laughs> Let me hook you up here. Oh, oh yeah. Maple syrup dispensers have one job, to pour sticky stuff neatly. They should be easy to fill and clean, and they should pour just the amount you want without too much dripping. We bought these five, priced from eight to $42, and we tried them with hot, cold, and room temperature syrup on both real pancakes and circles drawn on parchment to test precision. The bottom line, some of these made a drippy mess. Ugh. It's dripping down the front, it's coming back down the handle, it's sticky under here. Jackson Pollock would feel right at home, and you'd never want the kids using them. But our winner was great. It has a comfortable handle, it lets you pour precisely without hand strain, and it closes right up. It's glass, and it cleans in the dishwasher. This is the American Metalcraft Beehive Syrup Dispenser for $8, and your syrup problems are solved. I love a good oxymoron. Here's a few of them for you about pretty ugly or found missing or the always questionable Great Depression. Speaking of depression, I've got another one for you. It's turkey bacon. Those two words should never belong together, but luckily Jack's here. He's going to educate me on turkey bacon and let us know which brand is worth buying. I love the way you think. This is an oxymoron. Mm -hmm. uh, there are actually two paths to turkey bacon, and I'm not gonna say turkey bacon greatness. Okay, uh, okay. Because that would be another oxymoron. I will temper my <laughs> expectations, how about that? You should definitely temper your expectations. Okay. I mean, I will say that of all of the people who work here at America's Test Kitchen, no one loves bacon more than you. 
It's kind of true. So before you start tasting, or if you want to start tasting, it's sure, up to you. Let sure. me explain. There are two different ways to make turkey bacon, and I have raw strips here. One is they use ground meat. They grind up the dark meat, they grind up the white meat, they add the seasonings of the brine. It's like cake batter that they layer into a pan and then slice. That would be this style here with ground meat. Okay. The other starts with chunks of turkey thigh, one or two inch pieces that they put in a tumbler. And they add all the spices, they add the brine, and then they press it all together in a mold. Hmm, that okay. would be more like maybe Canadian bacon. Sure, okay. So this didn't actually impact our overall ratings. Oh, okay. So we liked some of each, if you can use the word liked, of each style. The bigger thing was about flavor. All right. How close they came. Now as you're tasting, think about what does bacon give you? It gives you meatiness, it gives you salt, gives you smoke, gives you sweetness. And preferably- I'd add one more thing to that. One more thing? Drippings. Drippings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not getting any drippings all right, here. All right, all right. Um, which I want to talk about. Um, the biggest thing that we probably wanted from these samples and what separated the winners, and I would also put that in quotation marks <laughs> from the losers, is um, a lack of defects. Some of these had some weird, weird flavors mm -hmm. that did not hit with salt, smoke, sugar, or meat. Um, and so if you are tasting these and picking up something odd, your taste buds <laughs> are working. Um, okay. There are some odd flavors in here that don't belong in any bacon made with any kind of meat. Interesting. Think about cooking and the drippings. We were cooking these per the manufacturer's instructions in a dry skillet. We strongly recommend that you actually put a little bit of vegetable oil in that skillet. You'll get better contact between the meat and the pan, better browning. So you're enjoying yourself, I can tell. Well, it's meat. Right? I'm going to give it that. Now, to, it's salt. To, to compare it to bacon, I'm not even going to say pork bacon. Bacon, by default, comes from the belly. Last time I looked at a turkey's belly, there was nothing that looked like this that came from that area. <laughs> oh, it was just a bunch of feathers. <laughs> They're all quite hammy. Not as bacony. That's definitely for sure. Yeah, I think if you grew up eating Canadian bacon, these get closer to that sure. definition. So anything that you are... I'm not sure I should use the word liking, but anything that is more appealing? Okay, well, this is not appealing, but this is almost like plasticine. You know, it's just rubbery, it's almost stretchable as I was chewing it. Like, food should not stretch as I'm eating it. Not not fan of that one. This one is uh, quite Canadian bacony, as <laughs> to use a word. I long for Christmas, I long for crunch, I long for a little bit of fat in my bacon. It feels very lean. So one time, I ordered eggs out, and it came out, and I said, what is that? What was the taste in it? Somebody had left a cigarette on my dish. That's what that tastes like. Okay, so... Um, so I don't like that one. Okay. <laughs> Just to be clear. <laughs> I'm gonna say you can never ever have bacon again, and you're only eating turkey bacon the rest of your life. Which one are you choosing? Uh, I would eat the plate underneath it, but if I had to choose, probably this one. You wanna see which you chose? Yeah. Well, you agree with the expert panel. This is the winner, in quotation marks, from Welshire Farms. It is a chunk style, the kind that's tumbled. It's... You can see the meat in there. I think that's yeah. what appealed to me. So this one is only made with turkey thigh. Uh, there's no white meat in it, and there are no horrible defects with mm -hmm. that. It's not close to real bacon, but there are no defects. Now, what is this one that has the little curled serrations here? Um, that was at the bottom of the rankings. It's from Butterball, so they know from turkey. Yep. I'm not sure they know from bacon. Right, right. Um, they're like turkey, smoked turkey ribbons. Would have actually been a great name. Then they wouldn't have had to compare it to bacon. And then this one? Uh, so this is from Jenny O. This was actually the runner-up. Too um, smoky. Like too ashy, too smoky. Not my favorite at all. You sure? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You didn't hate all three of them. It's so true, but if these were the only things left in the world, my BLT would quickly become an LT. On that happy note? <laughs> well, if you love turkey bacon, and I know so many of you do, well, why don't you try out our winner? It's Welshire All Natural Uncured Turkey Bacon, $6.99 for a 12 ounce package. What do pancakes and burgers have in common? They are both a lot more delicious when they're nice and brown. It's pretty obvious that this burger and this pancake feature better browning than the others. And browning equals big flavor. These are definitely the ones that I would like to eat. Now you can see that they're all cooking on the exact same griddle and they're actually identical except for one ingredient. 
baking soda. That's right, I added a small amount of baking soda to this pancake and this burger. Now it's not that the baking soda itself is browning, it's that it's making the food brown better. The browning on burgers and pancakes is a result of the Maillard reaction. Now that's when sugars and the amino acids that make up protein come together in the presence of heat to form hundreds of new flavor compounds. And that reaction occurs best in an alkaline environment, or when the pH is high. And baking soda raises the pH. So if your baked goods turn out paler than you want, next time try adding a quarter to a half teaspoon of baking soda. Not for lift, but for better browning. And same goes for your next beef roast. When you season with salt and pepper, try adding one teaspoon of baking soda for every three pounds of meat. You'll have better browning and a much more flavorful crust. I love a good cup of coffee in the morning, but I don't like coffee stains in my mug. Here's a great solution to remove those stains. Take one tablespoon of baking powder and combine it with one and a half teaspoons of water and stir to make a paste. Use the rough side of a sponge and that paste to scrub out the inside of your mug. This alkaline solution removes acidic stains more effectively than soap and water. And just like that, with a quick rinse, you're ready for your next cup of coffee. American style scrambled eggs are a fast and furious breakfast and they take just a minute or two to cook. Now the French, on the other hand, have a very different approach to scrambled eggs. They take their time so that the texture winds up very silky and creamy. A wee? <laughs> Maybe. <we. laughs> so you're right, the French take it nice and slow. They usually add a whole lot of butter and the result are these really delicate curds bound in a velvety sauce. Yeah, it's a very different consistency. Yeah, you really just have to take your time and they're delicious. I'm gonna show you how to make them. All right. We found a way to do it without all the butter. I'm gonna start by preheating a skillet here. That's a 10 inch nonstick skillet. I'm gonna give us some low heat. Now a 10 inch skillet crucial here, can you use a 12 inch skillet? No, you wanna use a 10 inch skillet. We have prepared the recipe to match a certain number of eggs and the timing has all worked out, so make sure you use your small skillet. Okie doke. And that has two tablespoons of water in it. Water? When the water starts to steam, that's gonna be our indication that the pan is hot enough to add the eggs. All right, so different right from the get-go. No butter, water. Yeah, so I have eight large eggs in my bowl here and I'm adding half teaspoon of salt. I'm just gonna whip these up while our pan heats up. And now usually you'd add a little water or milk or something to the eggs to yep. give them a consistency, but I don't see any other bowls around. Nothing else is going in. The French might add a little cream. Mm -hmm. But not us. Not us. Now you're looking for something specific or you're just going zen? <laughs> I'm enjoying myself, right? I'm kind of <laughs> zoning out on the eggs. So I don't wanna see any streaks of white left. I want it to be uniform. So you can see the water is steaming. That's our indication. So we'll put all the eggs in the pan. So the water is also going to dilute the egg proteins a little bit so they don't coagulate too fast. So be nice and creamy. That's right. That's the key to nice creamy eggs. No butter, but just taking it nice and low and slow. Well, this is really low. I mean, the eggs aren't even coagulating on the outside. That's right. These are some mellow eggs. So we're gonna go for four minutes. <laughs> We're gonna wow. get super mellow by the end of this recipe. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna take 12 to 14 minutes. Wow. So we should have gotten some coffee out here. We need yeah. to just settle yeah. in and take our time and we can chit chat while we make our eggs. I'm actually gonna start the timer so I know when four minutes are up. I think this is what I'm gonna call weekend eggs. Yes, definitely perfect for a weekend. So I just wanna stir constantly now for four minutes, scraping the edges of the pan, getting the bottom. So it's been about three and a half minutes. I know, it barely looks any different. <laughs> it is thickening up a tiny bit, and you can see steam is coming up off the pan. Mm -hmm. If we didn't see steam at this point, we would turn up the heat just a tiny little bit. Okay. Okay? So this is right. We're doing it exactly right, trust me. It does look a little darker, and there are a few curds cooked in there. Yep. But not much different than four minutes ago. Yeah, you'll see it start to thicken up in a little bit here. So that's been our first four minutes, so let's do four more. <laughs> they still look raw. What are you well, doing? They are still raw, but just hang in. I told you it was gonna take 12 yeah. to 14 minutes. And we'll keep on stirring nice and gentle here. <laughs> if any large curds do start to form, I'm gonna smash them right away. With okay, my spatula. no large curds allowed. That's right, this is about small and delicate. We could have these for dinner as well. That's, oh. that's what they do in France. Oh, so that makes sense. If you a want glass be... of wine, some vegetables, totally. salad. 
So think of it as a 12 minute dinner. I'm with you. <laughs> Just hang in there with me. They're gonna be worth it. It'll be worth it. All right. We got six to eight more minutes. I'm Just with you. Hang tight. I'm with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so it's been eight minutes. Let's do four more. I don't have any real curds starting to form here, so I'm just gonna turn up the heat a tiny little bit. All right. Just to get a little more action going. Not too much, we still have to be patient. But. Yeah, and there's still steam coming up yep. off the surface, and there's a few curds in there. Yep, actually that did the trick. You can see it's starting to happen. Now there's, oh, a, yeah. there's a large curd. Squash I'm, it. I'm smashing it. <laughs> no large curds allowed. <laughs> you wanna make sure you scrape the sides of the pan here. So now you can see they're starting to thicken up here. The texture is, is changing, they're not as watery. The time is up. I can tell they're done because the eggs are basically holding their position when I put them on one side of mm -hmm. the skillet. But you can see they're still super loose. So creamy. Creamy. So I'm betting you want to get those out of the skillet right away. Yes, but first I'm going to add one more tablespoon of water. All right. And that's going to prevent the eggs from tasting ah. gluey. And also a tablespoon of minced parsley. You could use chives or tarragon, whatever you like. I'm just going to stir them vigorously now just to Keep them nice and creamy. Break up any large curds that have formed. Give it's them amazing nice. there's no butter in there. I know, isn't that crazy? They look buttery. They look creamy. And they're gonna taste super creamy too. And those are done. They're gorgeous. Thank you. Let me serve this up here. Ooh, they look so rich. They are so creamy, so different from what we're used to, right? Yeah, but I kind of like that they're different. Yeah. You want to have buttered toast with this to give a little textural contrast mm. and get some butter in there too. You're right? <laughs> I'm going to taste the eggs just on their own yeah, to start. Me too. Mmm. Mmm. I can't believe there's no butter in here. So creamy. They're so rich. Well, you know what's so interesting is that it looks like a sauce. I know, they look almost underdone, but because of that nice slow cooking, they've come up all the way up to 160, so they're totally safe. Now I'm going to eat it like I would at home mm -hmm. with a piece of toast. Mm. Yeah. You know, I was making fun of them just a little bit at the beginning mm -hmm. because it was so low and slow. Mm. But I have to say, it is totally worth it. These eggs are out of this world. Yeah. Well done, Becky. Thank you. Something new. Something mm -hmm. new. So if you want to make super creamy French style eggs, beat the eggs with salt to completely blended and heat the skillet over low heat with water. Once you add the eggs to the skillet, stir constantly for 12 minutes over low heat to ensure that the small, delicate curds form and finish with a bit more water and parsley. And there you have it. From America's Dust Kitchen to your kitchen, creamy French-style scrambled eggs. I'm in love with these. Oh, good. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.